So, hey folks, and uh, welcome to another Sunday ride. And uh, this week's ride, we're actually up uh, near Broughton in Furness, in the, uh, the Lake District. Uh, we're just at the other side of Broughton. And uh, in the background is the, uh, the sea. And then just behind me is the, uh, the MT-10SP, ready to go. So we're just going to head up towards Coniston, sign here, nine miles. And we're just by the uh, High Cross Inn, just here. And uh, we're just going to head up this road just here. So stick around, stay tuned, and uh, let's get into the Sunday ride. So we're just heading up the A593 and uh, that's off the A595, the Broughton Road that takes you up to Workington and Whitehaven and uh, this takes us up to Coniston through Torva and it's about nine miles up this road. I've never been up here before um, but it looks pretty epic so uh, we'll just come to the junction just here and uh, carry straight on. As you can see, it's a lovely day again, and uh, looking forward to a nice ride out today. Got the whole day to explore. Temperatures around uh, 16 degrees today, and uh, we're meant to be having a heat wave next week, which will be nice. I actually thought that was it. I thought winter was here. I know one day in the uh, the week, I put the touring screen back on the bike and I went out for a quick blast. I only put it back on because I thought the weather was turning and winter was on its way, just to get a bit more protection. But uh, I actually found that it gave me uh, too much wind noise uh, on my helmet. Being six foot two tall, I get a lot of wind blasts. So uh, I took it straight off and put the, uh, the other screen back on that I've got just here. And uh, from that screen, I don't get any uh, any wind blast or anything like that, and it's all clean air. So uh, A593, Tolva, Coniston, that's the road we're on. A couple of narrow points here and there, but uh, normally it's pretty much a, uh, a two-car road. A little bit bumpy in places, but it's taking us into some nice scenery, which is uh, what it's all about. Look at those hills, absolutely stunning views. Now if you are heading up into this uh, region, uh, the way I came this morning was uh, M6 up into the lakes and then the A590 towards Barrow in Furness. And then I turned off at Greenod onto the A595 and then uh, I came through Broughton Village, or town, which is uh, quite nice. There's a square there, a couple of shops. You can always get some breakfast there before you start to head off up on the A593. A few farms and things up the road. Just got to be careful of farm vehicles. Still very green. I, uh, I expect these trees will be uh, turning in a month's time. And then uh, towards the end of September, beginning of October, if you get some really nice days up here, it's probably the best time to come. You can just see in the uh, distance there, some of the trees are turning brown and like a golden color. Yeah, it just looks absolutely spectacular um, about a month's time from now. A few nice little cottages tucked away up here. It's actually turned out quite nice. It was quite cloudy when I came up, but the uh, clouds are breaking now. Some blue sky, sun's behind me, warming up a little. Beautiful. Now this is the perfect time to come into the lakes. September, any time after August, as soon as the, uh, the tourism season's over. 
it's just a, a nicest place to uh, to visit you don't get held up too much in traffic I've got the uh, scenic ride app recording the route so I'll put a uh, a link just down below in the uh, description if you wanted to uh, use that link on an app and follow it uh, you can do and it's uh, it's quite nice actually it was quite windy when I came up I think because of the hills around me it's just uh, just dropped now there's no wind whatsoever gorgeous all these roads you've never been on before I just got the uh, the Google Maps out this morning while I was having my coffee in bed and I uh, I thought okay where can I go today and uh, which roads haven't I been on before so I decided to uh, to try this one and uh, once we get up into uh, Tolver and Coniston I'm going to try and take you up to a place where I tried in a previous video couldn't get to and uh, Years ago when I used to dive, scuba dive in uh, the UK That was a paintball place there oh, That's interesting Yeah, so back to the scuba diving So I used to uh, do a lot of um, like cave diving and training and things In a quarry above uh, Coniston It's about 30 metres deep, or it was But uh, I think it'll be slightly less now because the sides keep collapsing um, But when I used to dive in there it was a bit of an old scramble down, there was a path going down to the bottom so you could get in a couple of cars in the bottom where people have driven off the cliff it's about 100 feet uh, to the top of the cliff loads of little uh, caves going off with uh, little tracked vehicles where they used to bring the uh, stuff out in the, uh, the trucks a few nice beasts in the uh, fields just there and a newly surfaced piece of road which is nice So yeah, we're going to head up towards that. We'll get some uh, some footage and some uh, pictures once we're up there. And that's just above Coniston. And uh, I called it a garage on the uh, the way up to uh, get a uh, an iced coffee and a sandwich and a bag of crisps for lunch. I think if it's nice up by the uh, slate mine, that's where I'll have my lunch today. It's a bit blustery up there because it is quite high up. I'll uh, I'll cut down towards the uh, one of the lakes and uh, we'll stop there. Just coming into Tolva now near Coniston. That's a great little road to get you from uh, from Broughton. So once you get into Torva, just up here, there's a pub on the left and then there's a turning right and that will uh, take you back down towards Greenod way but I just thought I'd come Broughton way up on this beautiful Sunday So the pub there on the right, on the left, sorry Church House Inn on the right, looks all closed up and then just a few miles up this road we'll come into uh, Coniston Water so it's a bit different to a couple of weekends when I was up this way It was just too congested with traffic But like I say, out of season now, it's perfect So I'm still planning on doing the, uh, the west coast of Scotland At some point I was trying to do it in uh, September But it might be the, uh, the first weekend in October now uh, Work's picked up, which is good It's quite busy at the moment so uh, we'll concentrate on, on some work And uh, we're just dropping down into Coniston now So uh, yeah, so we will get a uh, West Coast Scotland Isles trip in But it'll be a uh, few weeks time So I look forward to that So BP garage on the right just here And then we're just going to do a left as we go over this little bridge there's some toilets there as well by the BP garage and then there's a nice little pub just on your left just here, the Black Bull Inn and Hotel and that's where we're going to head to just up this road here that's the shops and 
and those um, those hills, mountains in front of you, that's where the, uh, the mine is, right on the top. So we just uh, carry on up this road just here. And then somewhere up this road there's a, uh, a turning left where we need to head and uh, take us up onto the tops. I think it's a couple of miles down the road first. So we just turn left by a sign saying Tilbeth Wait, and uh, this just takes us up uh, up onto the mountain. So we'll keep on this road, and this will take us up towards that uh, mine I'm talking about. So it's pretty single track, so motorcycle-wise, it's perfect. Uh, chances of meeting a car up here, possible. I think there's a farm up here as well. Go over the cattle grid just here. A few sheep on the road and uh, dotting about, just be careful. Bit of sheep shit on the road as well. But uh, yeah, this brings back some memories. There's a uh, nice river stream coming down off the hills to my right, just under those trees. Just over there. And actually there's a road the other side of the stream as well. Just hope that I've got the right road. But anyway, it's all about exploring. It's been uh, many years since I was up here diving. Probably in my early 20s when we used to go in. Popular cyclist road. That second cyclist twitched a bit when, uh, when they spotted me. <laughs> So, now you can see all the slate just there in the uh, the hill that's been cut away. Not sure if this is the right road, but a beautiful spot. Tilbethwaite National Trust. Yeah, I think this is the right road. I do remember the uh, the farm ahead. Come on, Mr. Sheep. Don't see many black sheep, do you? All black sheep of the family. A few walkers having their lunch, sat on the wall. And this is where the road ends, so it is the wrong road I came. Anyway, never been up this way before. And actually there's a walking path there to Elterwater, three and a quarter miles, Little Langdale. Interesting. Back past my uh, little black sheep friend here. Yeah, so this area is uh, just full of slate. You do get some slate quarries uh, up and around here where they've mined it. Come on, sheep. Nice little wild camping place just here, but uh, I doubt if you're allowed to camp. But if you look to my right just here by the stream, you can see where the, uh, the slate's been uh, dug out of the ground. Or naturally come out of the ground. So what we're going to do, we're going to head back down this road and uh, hang a left and then uh, probably within a mile. I'm absolutely certain actually that the, uh, the other side of the, uh, the little uh, stream coming down the hill there is the road that I'm meant to be on so I'm not too far away but uh, yeah I don't remember this road from uh, years gone by. Okay, Hodge Close only. Um, so literally I came out the road end and 250 yards down the road is a sign saying Hodge Close and uh, I'd actually forgotten the name of this uh, this quarry and that's what it's called, Hodge Close. So I'll just head up here past the cows. Hello cows. Lovely beasts covered in flies. 
few passing places. There's a squirrel crossing the road there. Don't know if you spotted that, probably not. So there's the stream to my left just here. Looking forward to my coffee and sandwich. Getting a little bit hungry now. This lovely nature and uh, spoiling the peace with my uh, noisy exhaust. I actually took the baffle out of the exhaust this morning so that you could uh, hear that cross plane engine rather than it being all quiet with a baffle in. I actually quite like it without, but uh, can be a, a bit noisy through towns as it reverberates off the, uh, the walls of the, the buildings. So yeah, memories flooding back now, past this little farm, through here, and then uh, a little further up onto the tops, we'll come to, uh, to the quarry. A little white house up here, a bit isolated in winter, probably under snow in winter up here. There's a bit of a car park up here, and uh, it's all fenced off now around the edges because it's uh, it's a little bit dangerous. It's been eroding for many years and collapsing, and uh, probably not allowed to diving it anymore. That's a good place to park. So yeah, right up in the hills. I'll have a little walk and I'll show you the quarry. Literally just over that edge. 100 foot drop straight down. So we're up at Hodge Close in the uh, Lake District. And uh, this is the dive spot that I was uh, telling you about. Um, so I'll just show you it now. So it's pretty dramatic, so uh, get ready. So as you can see over in the other side, you've got an opening. That's where we used to come down, climb down with all the dive equipment and then jump in at the bottom. And uh, the actual uh, quarry is about 30 meters deep. Yeah, quite an amazing place. Had uh, many a fun time diving in there. Okay, so time to get some uh, some lunch and a uh, lovely spot to uh, to grab a bite to eat. There's the bike. But yeah, brings back memories. I used to uh, do a lot of diving in that, uh, that quarry. Oh, 
Okay, so onward, we're going to uh, head down back towards the uh, the main road, and uh, I think we're going to do a left and uh, follow that road through to Ambleside, and uh, we'll check out Ambleside, see what uh, what's happening, if the tourists have all gone home. It's funny the uh, the wind picked up while I was having lunch; it was absolutely still when I was uh, looking at the, the quarry but then uh, just as now as I'm leaving it's, uh, it's really picked up awesome place to come and uh, if you're up this way on near Coniston have a poodle up this road and uh, I'm surprised the National Trust don't put a board up I'm sure they used to be years and years ago telling you what the uh, the quarry is and what they used to mine from it but uh, I'm sure looking at the uh, the map it said copper but I think it's slate to be honest because it's just the walls of the quarry are slate so it must be um, uh, unless there was copper deep in those tunnels that are now underwater if you do head up this road just be careful in the middle of the road there's a lot of loose gravel Ah, we're back down by this uh, this river, this stream that comes down. Rather nice. Okay, so back down to the main road. And then we're going to head left. What a nice day it turned out to be. Old Bluebird Tours, it's written on that van in front. Minibus. And uh, named after Bluebird, the, uh, the boat that Donald Campbell on Coniston crashed in many, many years ago. And I think that's on display at the, uh, the museum at Backbarrow at the moment. His boat was found uh, some years ago in the bottom of Coniston and they raised it and uh, made it like new again. So it's on display there. So we're just heading towards Skelleth and Skelleth Bridge. Absolutely stunning cloud formations. Beautiful hills. So turning left to Rhinos Pass. And then we're just going to carry on on this road. Been up enough uh, single track roads today. So I'm not going to go over the passes. Also that would take me uh, over towards Waswater. And uh, that's not where I want to end up today. Although it's a lovely journey over the pass. Rhinos and Harnock Pass. Well worth doing up if you're up in the Lake District. So I think when we get further down this road at Skelleth Bridge I'm going to show you a, uh, a place that's really nice to uh, stop for a, a coffee or a tea and a cake. It used to be awesome and uh, not being for absolutely ages. I'm not going to stop there but I'll show you just now what with all the Covid situation. But they do some awesome cakes. So if you're up this way, Skelleth Bridge then uh, don't forget to stop and uh, have a break, have a Kit Kat or whatever takes your fancy. Some lovely cottages and uh, although I used to live in the Lake District you do feel very isolated around here especially if you uh, you don't drive or you don't have a car. So we're just at uh, Skelly's Bridge I think. Just here. Yeah. So Chester's by the river. I'm just going to show you around. So you've got a lovely river here with seating next to you. You could bring your coffee and cake. And then just here is Chester's, which is, uh, like I say, an awesome place for uh, as a cafe. Not featured it on the cafe series, but uh, I will do when things calm down a little bit. Got a little shop, and there's where you get your, uh, your tea and scones and all that.
But yeah, you could get your food and you can come down here and grab one of these uh, table and chairs. Or oh, there's a little table and chair place right next to the river. Like a decking area that they've made. So yeah, Chester's by the river. Cafe and shop. Since 1985. You've got the Scalith Bridge Hotel just here. So if you're up this way and you want a hotel, it's always a good one. And then I will point out another place that I, uh, I mentioned to a subscriber when we get into Ambleside. I think he's coming up here in uh, October with his wife. And uh, I think they're coming up in the car, so they're doing a bit of walking and exploring. So I gave him a couple of tips. He was looking for a hotel with something a little bit nice, but uh, local to amenities and things. So I suggested uh, an accommodation in Ambleside and I'll, uh, I'll point that out to, just in case he's watching so that you can see where I mean. And from there you've got accessibility uh, at night to, uh, to walk into Ambleside and uh, have a nice, uh, nice dinner with your missus or whoever you're with. A few pubs and uh, things. There's a nice Italian restaurant in uh, Ambleside and also a cinema there. Not sure if the cinema's open though. But yeah, from there I recommended a few places. But uh, Ambleside's pretty central to uh, to get anywhere, you know, on a bike or a car. Go and have a look at some touristy places without the tourists. Okay, so you can turn right down there towards Hawkshead, or you can carry on towards Ambleside just here, which is the direction we're travelling. So I had a um, a connect from a uh, subscriber that. Uh, Sorry if I don't remember the, uh, the name of your YouTube channel. He'd actually bought a, an Osbo Action that I use as my main helmet camera and the mic adapter and he was having some real audio issues with, uh, with the audio clipping. While I admit the, uh, the audio from here is maybe not as good as the uh, GoPro with the, uh, the big brick that they supply for the audio or even the Drift Innovation cameras uh, that have a mic sensitivity. The, uh, the firmware on the Osmo Action doesn't have that mic sensitivity yet. So uh, he was having real issues and I think he's going to send his camera back. Um, I have had issues on this one. Um, I find that if I talk quieter or just, uh, you know, like I was talking to a person next to me, then uh, the audio is perfect, comes out fine, doesn't clip, sometimes in edit. I do drop it down a couple of notches um, just to stop that clipping. But uh, yeah, I don't uh, really come across a problem that much with the uh, the Osmo Action. As a camera, I think it's far better than the uh, the current seven and eight um, of the, uh, the the GoPro. And uh, the buttons are really easy to press. Just single touch recording, one button, even when it's switched off, and literally within a second it starts recording. Or again, if you press it, it stops. I'm impressed with DJI with the video quality and uh, the 4K resolution and the settings within the camera. And uh, you see all these bed and breakfast guest houses. So if you're up this way in Ambleside, there's lots of uh, guest houses. And uh, worth checking with them actually because some of them have car parks and things like this one on the right just here where you can park up somewhere secure to park your bike so yeah um, anyway back to the uh, the Osmo Action so uh, I do find it great I think DJI will and I have put a, uh, a couple of uh, notifications in towards their support guys that it's a problem and they need to put some uh, mic sensitivity adjustment in the firmware so hopefully that will come in a new firmware update but then I do hear rumours that they're bringing a uh, Osmo Action 2 camera out uh, this winter sometime so let's keep uh, keep an eye out for that so you've got a nice Thai restaurant on the right hand side here and then you've got uh, Zeffirelli's on the left just here with the cinema that's the Italian by the way and then you've got plenty of shops outdoor type shops 
climbing shops and uh, yeah, a nice place to uh, spend the night if you're up this way or a couple of nights. And uh, like I say, I will take you to where that hotel is. It's a really nice one. It's not the cheapest, but if you want to treat your wife and uh, have a lovely stay, then uh, it's worth it. And it's uh, literally just across uh, across from the lake. So there's another Thai cuisine here. Uh, I've been to that one before. That's a good one. So two ties. Got a couple of Tesco Expresses and then uh, a couple of pubs. You've got a big one on the left here. That's good for food too. Royal Oak on the right. That's uh, quite a small pub so I don't know how they're getting on with Covid. You've got a Greg's. Grab a pasty for breakfast. Or a pastry or whatever they make. A vegan sausage roll. <laughs> they're actually quite good. Just down the road here. We're going to head down and then I'm going to take you to uh, a little detour, I'll just show you the uh, the hotel that I mean. I think it's about uh, 80 or 100, maybe up to 120 pound a night. If you're on your bike and you're looking for somewhere cheap, then there's lots of guest houses in the town centre that are just as good. But uh, if you want something a bit more luxurious, a little bit nice, then uh, I'll point it out. So you've got Hayes Garden Centre on the right hand side here. Okay, if you're into gardening. So oh, someone was asking how I mount my uh, my 360 cam onto the bike. Well, as you can see just there, and uh, it's stuck onto the uh, brake reservoir, and that's how I do it with the, uh, the moto extension pole. So just here, we're just going to do a right, just down here. So you've got the Ambleside Pier there. So if you are staying here, literally you could. Uh, Take a boat trip. You got the Waterhead Hotel Bar and Grill there. Always good for a bit of food. Nice pizzas. And there's the lake. So the uh, the Water Edge Inn. Um, they do have rooms as well, but they have a really nice beer garden outside. And then on the right, just here, I'll just show you is the Regent Hotel. Now this is the one I recommended to the gentleman. And uh, yeah, really nice. Uh, Nice rooms, good hotel, plenty of parking behind. And then literally just opposite you've got a really nice pub, the Water Edge Inn, like I mentioned. And you've got uh, some nice umbrella and uh, tables right on the water's edge. You can then uh, take a boat if you want from here down to Bonus or even all the way down the lake to uh, Lakeside and back again. Good way to see the uh, the lakes by uh, my boat. Fish and chip shop just here. Ice creams. Yeah, nice. And not uh, not congested now with tourists, which is great, because uh, a week ago it was uh, unbearable. There was a traffic jam from here all the way to Bonus, like nine miles of traffic. If you're on a bike, great. You can filter. If you're in a car, you're scuppered. So uh, yeah, September, October, best time, and uh, early season, April, and uh, early May time, really, I would imagine. So we're on the A591 now, and uh, we're going to head down towards uh, Bonus, and then uh, from Bonus we're going to head out of the lakes on my favourite road, which takes you... Uh, all the way down to uh, to the A590, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, the other good place that I really, really like, not the cheapest for accommodation, or food or drink, um, but it's just down the road here, and uh, we'll point that out in a second. And again, it's just a lovely spot, they've got a little, uh, little marina tucked in with some water sports you can do there as well. So plenty of things you can do. Uh, I think this part of the lake you're allowed uh, over 5 mile an hour. Or is it 10 mile an hour speed limit on the lake? I can never remember. But they do uh, water skiing from here. It's the only part of the lake that you can do water skiing or water sports on I think. So, uh, or at least over 10 mile an hour water sports. Um, and if you've got kids as well you can uh, come up here. There's lots of uh, places where you can go uh, 
you know, kayaking and things on the lake. So here it is, a little marina just here for the sailboats and things. And then you've got the Lowood Bay Hotel Resort and Spa on the left. And then you've got the Water Sports Centre here, you see the sign, 200 yards on the right in the marina. So yeah, that place, uh, that place is nice as well. And it's local, close to Ambleside and Bonus. But if you want to walk into Ambleside, it's quite a trek, so if you want something where you can just have a walk at night and grab something to eat, then I prefer Ambleside. You know, paddle boards, kayaks, sailing and everything you can do there. A little bit of traffic, but it's only cyclists that are holding us up today. Road on the left just here, Troutbeck, two and a half, you can head that way. And uh, also I think you can get to uh, Kirkston Pass that way. You've got the Langdale Chase Hotel on the right. Very, very expensive. Right on the lakefront. But a beautiful old hotel it is. And if you're uh, not staying there, they have a place where you can go and sit next to the lake and uh, have tea and scones, which is rather nice. But not doing that today. Steering clear of everything, I'm afraid, at the moment. And as this uh, COVID situation is rising a little bit in the UK, I'm just doing my bit when I'm out on the bike, keeping to myself. Take a nice uh, ice, can of iced coffee, sandwich and a bag of crisps. That'll do me very nicely. So you've got a visitor centre just here. A brock hole. Uh, restaurant crafts and all that kind of stuff there's a big kids playground in there as well so good for kids and then uh, yeah that's it really for uh, a couple of miles until we get into bonus i wonder if the ice cream man's in bonus today there's always a good one down by the glebe or in fact the uh, the pump house uh, cafe where i pull up always in bonus uh, they do some nice uh, ice creams and they dip them in chocolate which is rather good. So we'll see. I don't know if you can see I'm rocking the uh, the iPhone there. You can actually see I'm recording through that uh, on my phone. You can see I've opened the app. But now I've put the uh, SP Connect anti-vibration mount on there. Rather happy. And uh, just peace of mind knowing that it's not going to ruin the, uh, the camera on my phone. Now I've fitted that. Um, not that it did before, I had it on for about a year on the SP Connect mount and uh, I've never had an issue with it. I've got a lot of these uh, phone mounts now for motorcycles because of the high frequency and uh, vibrations that you get through the bars on bikes. I, uh, I decided to, uh, to get the SP Connect anti-vibration mount which I have. In case you're wondering what this silly piece of string is flapping about just here. I normally tie that onto one of my uh, throttle cables just at the other side. And I forgot to. And the reason I do that is that if the, uh, the GoPro mount does break there, then my 360 camera doesn't go flying down the road. So I just put a little knot in there. So when I stop in a minute, I'll, uh, I'll tie that on again. So we're going to do a right just here, you can go left over the 591 towards Keswick and Kirkston Pass and uh, we're just going to head down into Bonus. Might get a couple of picks by the lake, Let's see what's down there and see how, uh, how the tourism is now because uh, two weeks ago it was manic but uh, I think it's all good now. I'll just show you what it's like in September of a weekend. Not that busy really. Plenty of people, not social distancing. It's hard to say what to do really, isn't it? Everyone wants to have a normal life. So it's quite busy. Kind of expected it to be, really. And then you've got the lake just in front of us, just here. Yep, plenty of folk here today. I 
don't think I'd class them as tourists. I think I'd class them as being uh, people that were within a couple of hours away, really, that come up just for the weekend. Plenty of parking for bikes. You can see on your left just here. Nice bike park place. But my favourite place, if you've watched my videos before, is just uh, just along here. Uh, we're just going to cut down here. ducks and geese and things and some lovely boats nice not too much duck shit all over the, the ground at the moment anyway uh, you've seen this in other videos before here but yeah my favorite place now if you are into your boats the uh, marina here is very good Plenty of boat hire and stuff going on. Oh, I can smell fish and chips. Mr. Whippy's there today. Good ice cream van, that. Very good. And you can park just behind his van, too. And you've got the aquatic place selling boats just there. Yeah, so still very touristy in... Uh, in bonus for, for me having lived here grown up here from uh, age nine I think it was until uh, till 18 ish I uh, I much prefer Ambleside it's a little bit less tacky less touristy than bonus and uh, yeah I much prefer it so if you are basing yourself up this way and uh, wanting to do a bit of exploring in the lakes definitely Ambleside is the way to go so we're just going to do a right just here and then we're going to get on my favourite exit road from the Lake District so if you carry on on this road it will take you down towards Newby Bridge and uh, you can also cross the other side of the lake if you go right just here and take the ferry um, it's not always running though, so it's always worth just checking. And then we're going to head left just here. The sign posted Kendall and Lancaster, but this is my uh, little escape that not many people, uh, or at least the tourists, don't know about. Which is the Lithe Valley Road A5074 just right just here where this Porsche is going what a horrible colour why would you make a Porsche horrible colour I wonder if there's so many of them So this road, while it gets a little bit narrower, just up the road here, it is an absolute awesome route. This is where it gets a bit narrower does open up a little bit later but my favorite route
through Winster. on the road all quick shifters working nicely today Moving fast as I can, written on the back of that car with a snail. <laughs> so it's been another awesome day out today um, on the bike, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the uh, the ride out today, guys. Uh, it's nice to get into the lakes whenever the weather's as good as this. Um, so thanks again for all my subscribers for subscribing to the channel and supporting it. And uh, if you're a new subscriber to the channel, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell and um, catch videos coming up every week normally on a sunday i upload um, but yeah we're just at the uh, gilpin bridge inn just at the bottom of the uh, Lyde valley road and uh, from here we're going to head home on the a590 and then down the a6 back to lancaster um, but yeah Lyde valley road that's my secret uh, entry and exit into the lakes um, so a bit of a different route this week starting at broughton and then uh, up towards uh, coniston also the old uh, quarry where I used to uh, dive, um, really, really nice to get back to that place. And then uh, from there, obviously back down to Ambleside, a um, few tips on where to stay and things to do. And uh, also down to Bowness and uh, back down to here. So um, things coming up, I've got a, um, a trip coming up to uh, Scotland. Uh, like I say, it will be the end of September, beginning of October now when I do that. Um, but stay tuned for that. That'll be an epic route up to the, uh, the west coast of Scotland. And uh, yeah, have a great week at work, uh, all of you, or whatever you're doing. And uh, we'll catch you on another video. Cheers, guys. <laughs>